Hello everybody, my name is Mandy Cheskov and I'm a certified yoga instructor. Thank you for watching. Today I want to show you or share with you a 5-10 ten, ten minute routine. And the focus for this routine, uh, I've talked to many people, I work with a lot of people privately, te teach group classes as well. Um, but home practice and practicing on your own, a lot of people get confused and overwhelmed with how many postures there are, where do I start, what do I begin with, um, and what do I do? So there's thousands and thousands of yoga postures. It's a, the practice is over 2,000 years old. So today I just want to simplify it, um, just have this intention of focusing on the spine and the basic movements of the spine. So I'm gonna, this is Cassidy, thank you so much for joining. She's gonna demonstrate the little routine that I'm gonna be sharing with you and keeping in mind the spine. So the spine is meant to go forward, backwards, side to side, and then it also twists as well. So just thinking of this as we're doing these postures, uh, let's start right away. So let's stand up, we'll find mountain pose. So we'll start with our feet hip distance apart, parallel to each other. And Cassie's gonna stand nice and tall, grounded throughout her feet, reaching right up through to the crown of her head. And feel free just to close your eyes. Let's just come back to our center here. Smooth breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. Good, so feel free to do this in the morning if you feel like you just need an overall body stretch, maybe just before you go to bed. It might be a little energizing too, so make sure that you do just some really relaxing postures. You just lay still near the end. Good, so maybe about five breaths, stay here for a minute, maybe longer. Good, and then here, let's open up our eyes and inhale, reach your arms up. Fill up and exhale, dive forward. Good, so here we're gonna stay in our forward fold and then here I'm just gonna have you turn to the side or to the top of your mat, good. Nice, so here, if your hamstrings are quite short, everything's connected in the body. So if your hamstrings are, gonna, are quite short, it's gonna pull the pelvis and you might be looking like this if you're trying to do a forward fold. So if that's the case, you're gonna either grab something at home, maybe a table, a chair, if you have blocks, place your hands on blocks. So one block might be enough. And there's the three levels, so that's the highest, second, and even lower. So feel free to place your hands on a block just so the upper body's up more and it's not stretching too much in the back. So we do wanna have just a nice round spine here, but really we wanna get the hamstrings long. And so in order to get the hamstrings long, we need the legs straight because when you bend the knees, the stretch moves towards your bottom. So with your legs straight, um, make sure your quads are slightly engaged as well. So a cue that I say is slightly draw your kneecaps up so your quads are active. And then you want to really just keep breathing here and allow the hamstring, so this mid-region right here, to lengthen. If you're feeling the stretch just behind your knees, take a mini micro bend in your knees. It might just mean that your legs are flexible, so they're kind of bowing out and they're stretching here. You want to move the stretch to the belly of your hamstrings. And then once the hamstrings get long, the pelvis, everything, your spine can start to round forward. Navel slightly drawn back to keep your core engaged, support the low back as well. Head can be heavy. On average, it weighs 8 to 14 pounds, so you just want the weight to hang. Good, and smooth deep breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. And maybe you're here for about 30 seconds. Good, maybe a minute, two minutes is great too. Good, let's do another full breath, inhale. And exhale, so here we're just focusing on the spine, a slight rounding forward. Good, so let's halfway lift, inhale. And then exhale, fold forward. Good, and reverse your dive, inhale, sweep up, reach up high and hands to heart. So that's just a nice way to kind of flow with the movement of your body. If that's too much for you, just fold forward, come up. Good, nice. And then here I'm gonna have you face the front of the, or face the camera, perfect. And so here we're gonna do a side bend. So the spine rounds forward, now we're gonna do side bends. So feet are parallel, hip distance apart. Let's sweep our arms up so that their shoulder distance apart, palms face each other. And here the tailbone might lift. You wanna send the tailbone down, belly button back towards your spine and lower ribs might pop out. So you kind of might get this kind of arcing. You want to send the low ribs back, tailbone down. Good, Cassie's nice and long, reaching up high. And then here, take your right hand and grab just below your left wrist. Because you're not pulling right at the joint, you're getting a good grip on that arm. Let's lengthen up through both sides of the body. Inhale, and then exhale over to the right. 
Good, and she's just gonna stretch her side body here. So it's stretching the ribs, the intercostal muscles here, the organs a bit. And we wanna still reach and get nice and long throughout the body. Sometimes we can collapse completely. The right side is getting short a bit, but you wanna try reach and get long. Good, and then as you hold the posture, breathing in through your nose, out through your nose. So the breath is known as the royal road. It connects the body to the mind, and the breath really helps lengthen out, massage, and release the side body. Gravity keeps pulling us down so we get short here, so you just wanna reach up. So the spine is meant to go sideways. So we're going over to the right here. Good, let's do one more breath, inhale. And exhale, so feel free to stay for 30 seconds, a minute. Good, inhale, come on up, we'll switch the grip. Good, nice Cassidy, lengthen up, and then exhale over to the left. So here she's gonna do the other side. And notice if there's a difference in your body, what do you feel, what's happening? You always want to come back to yourself and question that stuff that comes up. And then it's way different if you hold the posture for about 10 seconds versus really getting into those deep parts of it in the body. Rather than just the surface, you're allowing yourself to get into those connective tissues. Keep breathing. If it becomes too much, come out of the posture. And let's just do two more full deep breaths. Good, and feel free to lengthen up a bit more. Inhale. And then on the exhale, sink in a little bit more. Yeah, and just one more breath there. Really good, Cassidy. Good, and then come back up, inhale, separate your hands, look up, and then hands back down by your sides or to the heart, good, perfect. All right, and then here, so that's the spine going sideways, forward fold. Here I'll have Cassidy come up to the top of your mat again. And so with back bends, you want the fronts of the hips open. You want to get that flexibility, because if here's short, it's going to pull the pelvis, and you try to go back, it jams the low back. So we're just going to take about 20 seconds to open up the hips. So here, let's just flow down. So inhale, sweep your arms up, and exhale, dive forward, over you go. Good, and then here we'll take a big step back with your left foot, and gently lower down your back knee. Good, and here you can just stay in a nice low lunge. If your hands don't touch the ground here, you can place the blocks underneath each hand, maybe have pillows um, to place the hands up higher. So you decide and see what's happening in your body, what do you need. If the back knee's sensitive, usually extra cushion for the back knee will help. So you don't wanna feel any pain in the knees. Um, there's a system of low lunges where the knee can track over the ankle. You just have to make sure the front heel is rooted. If it's lifting up, you wanna make sure it's rooted. So just walk your front foot forward even more. Good, and just smooth deep breaths. We wanna get really long in the left front hip here. Just on the side here. Good, and then let's reach the heart forward just a little bit more. Good, and just two more breaths. So she's here for about 30 seconds. Just stretching, lengthening the fronts of the hips. This area gets quite short, um, especially in the West. Ever since we're small, we're put in chairs, um, swings, uh, seats, um, sitting, and then also our desk jobs. Um, we're sitting a lot, so this area gets really short. Good, and then here, let's plant our hands. Let's come back up to our forward fold. Nice, Cassidy. Good, and let's just take a couple breaths here. Just ground down. And then when you're ready, big step back with your right foot. Good. Nice, and so you wanna keep the spine nice and long. The purpose of these low lunges is just to get the fronts of the hips open. Um, I find if I just do a back bend right away, it's more jammy and it hurts quite a bit more versus if I have the hips open, I have so much more range of motion, so much more flexibility. Good, so let's do three full deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose. Good, take your time, relax your eyebrows, your jaw. Nice, good Cassidy, one more breath. All right, and let's come back up to our forward fold. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, fold forward, and then reverse your dive. Inhale, sweep up. Really nice, and then hands to heart, exhale. And so here we're gonna do our back bend, standing back arc. So here, feet are hip distance apart, parallel to each other. <clears throat> um, yep, good, taking your hands to your sacrum, your low back, and you wanna tuck your tailbone and send your hips forward. So you're creating space for every vertebrae as you go back. Drawing your shoulder blades down your back and together. And then from here, using your hands as leverage to lift your heart. 
So this might be enough for your spine. You wanna make sure that your breath is nice and smooth, in through your nose and out through your nose. Feel free to bend your knees a bit, hips forward, stretching the fronts of your hips. Good, and then if you'd like to go back even more, if that's okay for your spine, you can start to arc back even more. So you're gonna bend your knees, lift your chest, so creating space for your spine. Every part of your spine, all the vertebrae. So rather than just going back, you're jamming them, you wanna lift and go back, lift and go back. Cassidy has been practicing for a while, she's also a yoga instructor, so this might not look like what you're doing, which is totally fine. Good, you just wanna allow the body to slowly unravel layer by layer. So honor your body, find that breath, stay there for about three breaths. Back bends are usually quite intense, good. And then as you come up, head comes up last. Inhale, press up through your feet. Good, and exhale as you come up, very nice. And feel free to do about three. I find the first one is way different than the third one, just because the body's opened up more and more. Really good. And then here, we'll just come all the way down to our back. So we wanna get some twists. So we've done forward folds, side to side, back bends, hips were open first, back bends, and now twists. So let's take our arms out shoulder height. Good, palms are facing up, and then stretch your arms to either sides of the room. So let's take our knees towards our chest. Good, and then we're gonna lower our knees over to the right, please. And then feet are lifted about a foot, and gaze can go over to the left. Good, so here we're toning the abdomen. It's a little bit more engaged. Good, it's nice and deep, and then stretch your arms to either sides of the room, so good. And then inhale, bring everything back up, and then knees over to the left, gaze over to the right. If you're not sure which way the knees go or gaze, knees go one way, your head goes the other way for the full twist. If that's too much for your neck, just keep your head straight up. Good, nice, let's inhale, come up. Let's do one more full round. If you're doing this at home on your own, feel free to do about five rounds. Good, feet are lifted about a foot, good. Let's inhale, come up, and over you go, good. And then feel free to just breathe here when you're in the posture. When you come up, inhale, good, inhale, come up. And then on this next round, we'll have our knees over to the right and just let the legs relax on the ground. So this is just more of a passive twist. Good, with twists, you wanna make sure either the hips, the shoulders are parallel with, we're referring to the earth right now, so the shoulders are rooted and then this hip lifts. So that's a twist, that's how you're gonna get a twist. The shoulders rooted, the um, hips twist. If the hips are rooted, then the top body twists. Good, nice, so just stay here for maybe about 30 seconds a minute. It's a little more relaxed and passive. You'll get deeper into those spots that are really holding. Good, and then let's come back up, inhale, and then legs over to the left. Nice, Cassidy. Good, so from the tailbone, up the spine, all the way towards the neck, everything's getting a nice twist. And the reason why I'm focusing on the spine, um, the spinal column, so many different structures, things holding it together, but the nervous system, that's the central piece where everything stems from there. So if the spine is stuck in any way, it's gonna reflect the limbs, so many different parts in your body. You can really go in depth about talking about it. So here, just really getting some basic movement for the spine, forward, back, side to side, twist. Good, and then let's come back up. And then just take your knees towards your chest, just kinda rock side to side, maybe rolling on your low back. Just kinda straighten up the spine again. Circling one way and then the other and then just finish in Shavasana here, so also known as corpse pose where you just lay flat on your back. Good, if at all this hurts your low back, have the knees lifted, maybe a bolster, that's a big long pillow um, underneath them, a blanket so they're lifted a bit, or you can just walk your feet up, have them bent. And then you just wanna close your eyes, let your body relax, and staying here for about a minute to 10 minutes is so great if you have that. So I hope you learned more about yourself, about your spine, your body, yoga postures. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Dr. Diana Draper. I am a naturopathic physician in Castlegar, British Columbia. For this New Year edition of Healthy Human, I want to talk about goal setting. So if you are like me, you have procrastinated until January 1st to get out a piece of paper and write down what your goals are for this year. If you are not like me and you've done this in December, congratulations. I hope you are putting all of these pieces in place. However, if you're still trying to figure out what you 
want to do this year, I'm going to give you my recipe for success moving forward. So number one, grab a pen and paper. First things first, when you're setting goals, be realistic and be practical. I like to limit my goal setting to three a year. So I get to choose three major goals that I set up every year for myself. And I really organize the rest of my life around these goals. I like to check back on my goals once a month to see are there things in my life that are obstacles for me reaching these goals and what can I do to change that. It's a great check-in once a month for yourself to stay on your goals. So first things first, choose three goals and put them in place. Number two is create discipline for yourself. So whether that is checking in once a week to reassess or tracking your progress, for example, if you wanna do an exercise program, getting an app that helps you track that, or letting your friends know, hey guys, this is what I'm gonna work on this year, and have them check in with you. How are you doing on your goals? So one of the most important milestones for us to be successful is to be disciplined and to track what we're doing. Number three is keep it realistic. Life is complicated sometimes, and we have curveballs thrown at us all the time. So you really wanna create goals that are realistic for you in your life, where you're at right now, and know that you can change those as you go along. So realistic goals are ones that allow you to keep taking one step forward at a time, not making a big extreme leap forward that usually results in us having a big extreme leap back, if not to where we started, further back. So those are my three recipes for success for setting goals in the new year. So to recap what we just talked about, three key things to do for successful goal setting in 2019. Number one, Choose three goals or less, keep it simple. Number two, make yourself accountable either by checking in with yourself or having somebody else check in with you. And number three, keep it simple and make it realistic so it's achievable. If you have any questions about what we talked about or you need a little bit more help, please feel free to reach out to me. I am here to help. Make sure most important of everything, enjoy the journey. This is what real life is all about. Good luck. Hi, I'm Christy Shields and I'm a group fitness instructor. As we all know, sometimes getting a workout in isn't just a matter of motivation, but it's also a matter of time and convenience. Here's an easy at-home workout you can do with or without weights and a mat. And our friend Cassidy is going to demonstrate for us. Our first exercise is the squat press. Take your weights or just with your hands at your shoulders, we're gonna drop down into the squat, keeping the hips back, pressing out of the heels and pressing overhead. Keep the core tight as you press the weights overhead. The next exercise is jumping jacks. Classic jumping jacks, open and close. An easy modification for this would be to step out with one hand, one arm and switch sides. The third exercise is the reverse lunge with the fly. This incorporates some shoulders as well as the legs. And you can switch sides each time. Cassidy makes this look easy. The fourth <laughs> exercise are the airplane deadlifts. Taking an exercise from yoga, we're going to work on our balance by reaching out and then stepping together and switching sides. Just tip at the hips and stand all the way back up. The fifth exercise are split squat jumps. This is a nice cardiovascular exercise to get your heart rate back up, but if you need to modify it, we do have an option. Hands on the hips, we jump into a split and then switch. An easy modification for this would just to be to step back and take the jump out. Our sixth exercise is also taken from yoga and we use the down dog to work our core. Doing the traditional down dog, we take up one leg and we bring our knee to the opposite elbow and then we reach back. Now we bring it to the same side elbow 
push it all the way back, then to the nose, and then we're gonna switch legs. Opposite, same side, and center. From here, we're gonna move right into crunches, laying on our backs, knees bent, feet on the ground, support the head with the hands, tuck the hips under, keeping the lower back flat on the ground, elevate the shoulders off the ground, and keep a little space under your chin like you're holding a little orange, keeping the shoulders off the ground, just lift and contract the abs and gently back to start. Try not to let the shoulders rest completely on the ground in between, and try not to pull the head, but just support it. And for our final exercise, we're also gonna work the core, but this time we're gonna roll onto our stomachs. Arms extended overhead, legs extended behind, long neck, shoulders of the ears. We're gonna lift our arms and legs at the same time into a Superman and lower. Make sure you keep breathing through all the exercises. And you're done. Great job, Cassidy. Try to do these exercises for 20 repetitions each. Go through it twice, but if you're feeling really motivated, try three sets. Hello, my name is Marita Heronin, and I'm a certified holistic nutritionist. Today I want to talk about the importance of reading ingredient lists instead of just the protein, fat, carbohydrate, and calorie content of a food product. So many people will look at calories, carbs, protein, and fat to compare with another product, and that um, definitely is useful. Generally, we want to decrease our sugar, increase our protein, and watch that the calorie content is not super high. Um, but when you get into looking at the ingredient list, it's really important because a lot of times food pr uh, producers will add additives, flavors, dyes, and other preservatives that really have no nutritional content. So things like artificial sweeteners, flavors as I mentioned, dyes, um, other things that you may just not know what they are, such as citric acid or cellula cellulose or BHP, these are things that can cause digestive disturbances and inflammation in our body. So I'd really encourage you to pay attention to the ingredient list in addition to the protein content, carb content, and fat content. And know that also in an ingredient list, the contents that are listed first are what are highest in content by weight. Um, so if you see it at the beginning of the list, that food is mostly consisting of that ingredient. All right, thank you very much.